just lately had a lot of problems with my, my dogs. As you know, uh, we had little um, Elsa, she was my main camping dog. Uh, sadly, uh, I had to have her put to sleep six weeks ago. Yeah, six. Uh, yeah, six weeks. It was six. Five weeks. Five weeks. Mandy's in the background there. Mandy, five weeks ago, was in the Bristol Heart Institute having a, a fairly massive operation. Um, she's back home uh, and um, I've been doing a lot of uh, caring duties. I've been able to get into the workshop to do uh, a few knife builds and managed to finish off a few knife builds. This little one here, little Jess, uh, she's 15 and a half now. Ever since Elsa has been gone, uh, she's not barked, she's not growled, she's gone off her food and uh, she, well, she's going downhill to be honest with you and um, she had an ordeal um, about two months, two and a half months ago we had to have her uh, left eye taken out and uh, no, I don't think she's long for this world really uh, and that would be um, that would be that with my dogs uh, I'm, I spent a lot of money on these dogs in the last uh, three months. Uh, I bet the, the vet's bill was not far short of uh, £2,000. And the results three to four months on from that are probably going to be two deceased dogs. Um, and the dogs didn't really appreciate going to the vet. But as uh, a pet owner, uh, you kind of do all you can. Um, you do all you can to, for the dog, you know, for the dogs. Uh, it's a difficult one. I've had dogs for. This is my. I've had three dogs since I've been away from my parents. Both my parents have now passed away. And we always had dogs then. Uh, so for the last 30 years, I've had a dog. A dog's lived with, with us in our house. And I've had so much fun and pleasure and joy from these two dogs. Uh, and the pain in losing them uh, reflects that joy. Uh, so immense joy from having the dogs and uh, immense sadness when they part. Uh, isn't it Jess, eh? Mm, good girl. Anyway, they're only dogs but they become part of your family, you know? Anyway, on a happier note, uh, Mandy's on the mend. She's um, went for her longest walk a couple of days ago. She managed a uh, mile and a half, so that was good. Um, and I have been managing to get into the workshop, build a few knives. I've been managing to get out uh, into nature on my other channel, Wiltshire Man. I've managed to get out into the woods, managed to get out on my motorcycle. Almost had my first uh, flight on the paramotor since... Uh, Lockdown's been eased, but the power motor had a bit of a malfunction, so I've got to make some modifications to that before I can fly again. Um, hopefully later on this week. Uh, but the knife making's been going well for me. Um, I've been able to use my new grinder. Uh, I'd like to talk about that grinder because um, it's been built to a standard and not to a price like so many things are. In this modern day and age, uh, and I'm really impressed with uh, with how well that grind has been working for me. Um, it's a revelation, uh, fantastic bit bit of kit, and that was an MP, uh, Mike Palmer. Mike's also a knife maker, and uh, he's a, a jolly good knife maker at that as well. So. Um, you know, uh, another 
uh, UK knife maker to, to check out I would say. Anyway, let's look at some of my recent knife builds. I uh, wonder if I can get this in the light. Ah, there we go. We're in the light. This is one for Mark. This is going out this morning. Um, as you know, I don't sell, uh, I don't take orders. But what I do do is when I sell a knife, if I get another load of email inquiries in, then I say to those people, if you hang about, I'll have another knife ready in a, a week or two, um, and, I, and I can do one for you then. So Mark falls, all these people that have bought these knives, they fall into that category of people that I've inquired in the past and they were unsuccessful, and uh, then I was able to build a knife for them. So there's this is Mark's Desert Ironwood. Uh, let's get some light on the subject. Tapered tang, green G10 liners, mosaic pins. That's going to be wrapped up and packed and set on its way uh, this morning. Our post office is back to normal now, thank goodness. This one is for Shane. I don't show. I don't know if this camera is doing him justice. Uh, Stabilised massa birch, yellow G10 liners, tapered tang, all triple tempered. 59 HRC as measured. It's quite a, a harsh direct sunlight on that. So, uh, yeah, I'm almost in shadow, aren't I? Friends. This one's an interesting one. We've got to finish the level work on this. This was uh, Alan uh, asked, "Could I fit brass liners?" Uh, so, and he sent me the wood. The wood is uh, English yew wood, which uh, he harvested from a yew tree close to his grandfather's grave, I believe. Um, you notice there's no logo on the blade. That's because it's a left hand. A left hand knife. He wanted a left hander. Uh, left hand sheaf as well. There's the thick brass liners. Uh, I went for thick brass liners on it because the, the wood that he sent, as it dried, it warped quite badly and I wasn't sure I was going to have much usable wood so I thought I'd uh, err on the side of caution and uh, make up any discrepancy by using uh, thick brass liners and then I had to drill out the um, the, 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 the brass uh, a lot to reduce the weight it's still quite a weighty knife but uh, also quite unique with the brass liners so that's it Alan that's uh, that's your brass liners, look. Um, I've got another knife for Chris. Critter. He goes by the name of Critter. Uh, hang on a sec, shall I find that one? Oh, it's another massive knife. Uh, I, I've i better show it, I suppose. So Critter, this is, uh, this is Critter's knife. 
standard classic in the right hand uh, with tapered tang black G10 then um, my friend Paul he's asked for one and uh, I've built this one for Paul this is red G10 with solid pins 4mm tapered tang it was Paul actually that many years ago he gave me a uh, a Woodlaw, an Allenwood Woodlaw, and uh, I was able to use the Allenwood Woodlaw to um, model my handle shape and size on. So that's uh, more or less the same uh, handle size and shape as the uh, Allenwood Woodlaw. With that knife was my main inspiration to start knife making actually, because I always wanted an Allenwood Woodlaw. Uh, at that time I could never afford one and then Paul came to visit me once uh, a few years ago and uh, to buy one of my knives and then um, when hang on a sec it's Aunt it's my friend Aunt Aunt can I bring you back? I'm just making a video you carry on making your video <laughs> yeah yeah your, your feature on my video <laughs> okay. Hey, what well, do you want to say hello to the people? Hello people. There you go. Look, say it again Aunt, so they can hear you. Hello people. There you go. Look. <laughs> I'll give you a ring back in a minute. No problem. Cheers Aunt. Bye. That's Aunt who uh, often helps me when we go to a uh, knife show and we we do a lot of um, camping together as well. Uh, and we will again once the lockdown has been eased a bit more. Um, so that's that knife and I got one other knife which um, a chap on Facebook uh, asked me about um, hmm. I'll, uh, I haven't got his name to hand immediately and he doesn't know what I'm going to offer him yet um, but it's this knife uh, this is another classic tapered tang, black G10, solid pins um, so is the light getting it? Uh, that's the knife I have for you if you're watching this video I forget your name now yeah I don't know the guy's name at the moment now, the funny thing is that I don't know what this wood is. It was uh, sent to me some years ago and I thought it was Cocobolo but it is not Cocobolo. Uh, but I'll tell you what the wood was used for. It was the pallet off of as uh, a glockenspiel. A glockenspiel is an, a, an instrument um, similar to a xylophone. Uh, but the glockenspiel has wooden pallets and that's that's what that handle is and if you listen look ding ding yeah that's definitely E flat minor I'd say uh, it's superb handle material it's very very stable obviously it has to be stable because uh, being an instrument if the wood was to change dimension then the note would change so um it's a very suitable handle material for a knife um, but I don't know what the wood is called and so if anyone knows what wood the pallets of a glockenspiel are made from then if you can let me know in the comments that would be uh, useful I can forward it to the person that then buys this knife so rather a unique knife that and that's the one available for that chap on Facebook um, so I think that's about it uh, nothing else to mention um, apart from my dogs I think everything's good really uh, and the dogs are you know you you have them for part of your life as my friend Bry 
says you have the dog for part of its for part of your life, but they're with you for the whole of theirs. Uh, and um, that's the contract we sign when we have dogs. They are beautiful creatures, beautiful. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, hopefully, normal service will be resumed uh, soon, uh, and I'll be able to spend a bit more time in the workshop. But I. Due to my situation here with my wife, and we're getting older now as well, you know, I, um, I've got to get that work-life balance right, I think. So, uh, you know, do, do what we can. Uh, thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.